Uh, at, as I think almost everybody here knows, in 2019, we had an effort to try to launch a business increment area. Um, I'll go into that shortly. Uh, so this is a new proposal based off of our engagement with the board and with uh, asking questions of property owners in the neighborhood over this past year. Based off of that feedback and feedback from the previous time of 2019-2020, this proposal is focused on the critical needs identified. It's right-sized. Uh, it's right-sized to ensure that there's overwhelming support within the boundaries and that although the boundaries are uh, right size. It's a place to grow from. Uh, it's a place to start and then to grow from. We know that our neighborhood continues to have challenges around safety as well as trash and graffiti and that there are people in need and that there's opportunity around economic development uh, looking into the future. Um, I'm going to play this video very quickly as to uh, about what is a BIA? This is from the city of Seattle. They have- What are BIAs? Yep. Business improvement areas, or BIAs, also commonly called business improvement districts, are a community-driven means of allocating resources and services to business districts throughout the city. BIAs are not a new concept. In fact, since the 1970s, more than 3,000 BIAs have been established around the world with 2,500 of those in North America. As of 2016, there are 10 BIAs in Seattle, located in many of the major business districts, and there are several more in the works. Established by neighbors for neighbors, BIAs enable businesses and properties to come together, connect, and identify various needs to address as a community. What kinds of needs? Well, that's up to you. BIAs within Seattle have been set up for the sake of everything from security and community marketing to streetscape improvements and parking programs. That's the beauty of a BIA. They're designed by those who are invested in and interacting with the neighborhood on a daily basis. Since BIAs vary according to size and physical domain, their scopes and budgets also vary. Think about it this way. A BIA is essentially a fund that can be used to pay for different programs and services. In Seattle, smaller districts maintain budgets ranging from fifty dollars to $250,000 annually, while larger BIAs can raise half a million to several million dollars per year. Typically, BIA funds go towards cleaning, marketing, promotions, and special events. A BIA can run as a single entity or channel its funds into another organization, such as a Chamber of Commerce to provide services. Everyone involved pays into the BIA and contributes their fair share, empowering local businesses and property owners to oversee improvements collectively. If you're interested in starting a BIA in your district, contact the City of Seattle's Office of Economics. Anyhow, I thought that was a good recap uh, of presenting what is a BIA without me having to do that school myself. <laughs> um, so, uh, just a quick recap, in 2019, we started the conversation with the steering committee in February. Um, we went through a robust conversation, ultimately submitted uh, a request to city council. At the time, our threshold was including the city to have more than 50% support. So we submitted it with 57% support of the city and property owners. Um, the city council voted 7-0 in favor, but changed the boundaries, so we needed a second vote, which we then went back to collect affidavits uh, to be able to confirm the support um, and had to come up with a, a boundary and affidavits of where uh, the private property ownership support was about at 60%. Um, that was right when COVID hit and we decided now that wasn't the time to pursue it given the economic changes. So we put it on ice. Um, and so it paused uh, to restart at a future time. We started a conversation with the board this past year uh, and then did a community survey. So uh, again, uh, our next steps after this is obviously today's presentation, continue one-on-one -on -one outreach through presentations. Um, be able to get specific feedback on our proposal uh, and sign up people in support so we know where support level is. And if 60% support exists, then submit it to council. Um, like Ed was saying, uh, our organization is really twofold here as we think about our future. One half is the BIA funded by a 
of uh, rate payers, property owners who want the services, getting the services funded by them. The other side is our, the rest of the conversation that we've had today about the future of the neighborhood funded mostly by foundations and donations, membership fees on that side. And so uh, you'll see that C shape is very similar to the price chart that I showed for the 2022 budget. Um, so we did do a survey this past year and what we heard is 100% uh, of folks want uh, to focus on safety. Almost everybody wants to support on cleaning aspects with uh, more than half of folks wanting support around parking and uh, enhancing the neighborhood or redefining it. And so we have focused then on right sizing the BIA uh, with the idea that we provide a proof of concept that we can go back later to expand uh, both the budget and geography of the region once there's effectiveness. So in 2019, we had proposed this pie chart. And sorry, the colors don't appear to be coming through in the room very well because it's not so pretty. Um, our updated budget, so this was 490,000 in 2019. Our new budget would be more like 290,000 um, with more of the budget, percentage of the budget focused on safe and clean. And also the advocacy portion around and just planning for the future funded, not through this work, but through uh, our foundations and other contributions. Uh, this just kind of shows uh, the actual levels of funds by program area. Um, again, while there is a reduction in the safety claim, it's also for fewer property owners and a percentage overall increases. Yeah. Um, Diving into each of the areas, um, within safety, uh, there has been a strong indication that folks would like to see patrols at, at night in particular, that it's uh, really hard to, to take care of that issue at night. And so we have uh, our program staffing, suggest program staffing will be aligned with that, as well as just strong support for daytime ambassadors to continue to monitor. Um, and there was support for physical improvements like lighting. Around the cleaning program, uh, strong support across the board for all of the major things you would expect uh, to happen for hypodermic needles to grab straight up, and also for uh, graffiti and to some extent for graffiti coatings that need to come from fire layers. So, together, our proposed program for the safe and clean would be nighttime security patrols, private security uh, contracted to do that. Um, daytime ambassadors likely also contracted out uh, so we don't have to do staff management but are instead managing the contract. Um, they would be doing multiple things, including uh, patrolling for safety, but also connecting people in need to social services, cleaning up litter and graffiti as they're doing that activity. And then if, we, if there is a major event in the, uh, in the neighborhood, um, being on hand to be there, um, and then also monitoring for parking violations especially around uh, private business parking. Um, in addition, some funding for major spot cleanups and uh, for uh, physical improvements, like adding public trash needs. Parking program, this is a very small slice on the overall budget, um, but it does tie into the neighborhood ambassadors as just described. Um, we have a large part of the neighborhood is not uh, managed by the city in terms of traffic violations and is managed by the business owners themselves because of an unimproved right of way. And so we could have a program by which we have a unified approach towards that and then try and the ambassadors can help uh, regulate it. So this is something we thought a lot about back in 2018 that we've been um, Around neighborhood enhancement, um, there was really strong support of bringing back the farmer's market uh, within our survey. Um, still a little unclear what our goal would be in that, but if we have dedicated some funding within the budget to help make that happen. Um, it was great uh, up, and through, uh, up until the pandemic hit uh, when they pulled out. Um, and there would be additional small amounts of funding for physical improvements as well. So in total budget uh, kind of breaks down um, two thirds of the budget. It's just focused on the number one priority that focus folks identified, which is just having patrols at night and during the day, um, and the day folks being able to do more than just security issues, but also being able to connect people in need. 
uh, essential services and um, so uh, um, key to our approach is to define boundaries so that the people who want the services get the services and those who don't want it generally don't have to as best as we can to have some some boundaries. If there are property owners outside of our defined boundaries, our approach is they could contract in uh, to be included, or perhaps the city council wants their proposals before we could, could amend it at that time. So looking at where we were with our affidavits in 2020, March of 2020, um, we have come up with four sub areas that we think have a logical connection in each of those areas um, where there is overwhelming support for the BIA uh, for receiving services based off of at that time where our affidavit support was. Um, and so um, this, um, this should be amended to March of 2020, not March of 2019, future presentations. Uh, so there's the Northwest, Northeast, uh, South McDougal area, and then um, the area that is really uh, centralized around the south end of the Smith area. Um, we asked questions within our survey about what would be a fair rate, what would be the preferred rate. Um, there was overwhelming support of just adopting the Downtown Everett Association's rate. Um, however, when we looked at the numbers and applied it to property owners, it became clear it would be less fair rate, uh, just because it's a just different types of properties here. And so our previous approach was trying to split uh, the amount of revenue coming into the organization based off the rate on land value and land size. And that ends up with a fairly fair rate consistent with last time as well. Um, this does reduce the, this is a lower rate on land value than our previous proposal at 50 cents per thousand dollars of land value. Um, the rates are also fairly consistent with other BIAs, as you can see in the chart, um, that uh, 50 cents is uh, within the realm uh, per square foot, it's in the realm of the valid BIA, and four cents is lower than anybody else in terms of uh, four cents per thousand dollars. Um, here's a few example assessments of property owners. Uh, I'm not sure if I didn't ask conference whether I can share this, but um, it, and looking at uh, five different properties here, uh, what their total assess annual assessment would be uh, based off of their square footage and market value uh, as estimated by the county assessor in 2014. So if you are a property owner here or online, you can get, maybe think about those properties and where you might fit. The other thing is our uh, embedded in our last proposal was a series of accountability measures uh, within the final ordinance. Um, our petition would include all of those accountability measures uh, directly in the petition. Um, First of all, is starting smaller, uh, which makes it a little bit more accountable moving forward. Um, it would require renewal after five years. There's a very structured rate pair board. Um, the budget is also smaller uh, and has to be approved annually by three different bodies. Uh, the rate pair board, the, the rate payers, um, who are the property owners paying into the system, um, and the city. And then there's the performance metrics set by the rate payer board and reported to, to the rate payers at the annual rate payer. So what's new? More focus on safety and cleaning uh, with nighttime uh, private controls. Boundaries are right-sized to those who most want the service. The budget is smaller, the lower rates, um, and the overhead costs are decreased. Uh, last time would be a full-time uh, director of the, of the uh, overseeing the BIA, in this case, would be a part-time program manager. And there's the increased transparency and accountability measures built in. 